gunshots, 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 and definitely breaking news, breaking news, breaking news. Check it out. We have a new ex-trafficking charges against former Amber Crowby and uh, Finch CEO Mike Jeffries. It's revealed. This is the New York District Attorney for Brooklyn. They're speaking on it. Sit back and listen. Y'all tell me if this sounds similar to the Diddy case. So this make me, and I'm sure a lot of other people, raise the question, could this have been Diddy's work? Because you know, Diddy have to get somebody bigger than him. Now, Amber Crowley and Finch, they're worldwide, and they got billions, you know? Now, they're caught up in the same type of charge as Diddy. So I'm wondering if this is a misery love company affair. Did Diddy turn them in or give information to lead to them? They raided their house in Miami the same as they did Diddy. They're bigger than Diddy. Yeah, this might sound like a little conspiracy theory, but I'm right right now. All right? So if you subscribe, hit the notification bell. If you're not subscribed, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Cash app is on the screen. Hit the icon. Make sure it's saved with created in 2020. And definitely join the membership page. I'm going to be putting these videos up over there first. All right? Let's get this party started, because it's how we do it at the uh, Mecca. Hey, yo. Hi, hi, hi. Keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. Hi, hi, All uh, right, you know this unique mech audio, man. I'm bringing you a special broadcast tonight. I want y'all to tell me what you think it is. Do you think uh, Diddy had something to do with this or not? Listen to these charges and tell me, do they sound eerily similar to what Diddy's being faced with? We know that he have to turn in somebody bigger than him. And I know, you know, social media like the names that they know, you know, that they've been hearing for years associated with Diddy, like, you know, the Usher, the Justin Bieber, you know, and all these names. But those are peons compared to Amber Crowley and Fitch. Alleged indictment that was filed against them, brought in the same manner as Diddy. And I have to look at the indictment because nine times out of ten, they hit them with the forfeiture. Imagine the government owning Bad Boy, all of Biggie's masters, and Amber Crombie and Finch when they're done with. They're going to get out the deficit, you know, by using, you know, X charges. <laughs> you know, what do you think? Let's see what they got to say. Let's see what this charge is about. This ain't going to be too long. I want to get to the point, let y'all know what's happening, and see how we doing it at the Mecca. We're bringing you entertainment. Hit the like button. Hit the like button. Don't just sit around. That's free. All right? Follow me on Instagram. That's on the screen above my head. Cash that course. Don't worry about it. At least hit that like button and the notification button, and we good. All right? Let's listen in. 2014, Michael Jeffries was the chief executive officer of Abercrombie and Fitch. Abercrombie was a widely known clothing retailer with stores around the world. Mm. Aspiring fashion models knew that a place on one of Abercrombie's iconic ads could be the ticket to success in the modeling industry. All right, so he's saying that, it, I'm gonna speed this up so I can break this down so we understand. He's saying that aspiring um, models, male models, that if they get on an Abercrombie and uh, Finch commercial, you know, uh, billboard, that, that'll launch their career. That's like getting a major record deal, but that's called a major modeling deal. That's what they're saying. Now, what do they have to do to get this? But while Jeffries was the CEO of one of the most recognizable clothing retailers in the world. Like Diddy, CEO of one of the most recognizable record labels in the world. Airy familiar, isn't it? <laughs> he was using his power, his wealth, and his influence to traffic men for his own sexual pleasure and that of his romantic partner, Matthew Smith. The same as they're accusing Diddy of doing. But if you notice, Amber Cromie has a co-defendant. His name is Fitch and the CEO, Mike Jeffries. 
You see how there's names listed? Who is Diddy's accomplice in his crime? That indictment is so frivolous. I would have been one at that if I was his lawyer, would have challenged the indictment and forced them to produce the indictment with the proper names, with his co-defendants and everything else because he has a right to confront his accusers under the Sixth Amendment. Let's get this thing moving. The charging documents describe in graphic and disturbing detail the violent and exploitive acts these defendants perpetrated, for which they will now face justice in a court here in the Eastern District of New York. Same place Diddy's at. Hmm, Eric Rinsomans. So here's what's alleged in the indictment. Let's hear it. Jeffries and Smith employed James Jacobson to act as a recruiter to find men. The same as they accused in Diddy of using his staff at Bad Boy, at Combs Enterprise, and everywhere else is the same as they accused in these young men. Jacobson engaged in, quote, tryouts with men across the world where he would typically pay them to engage in sex acts with him. Okay, so they say that he engaged in tryouts, right? That he paid them to engage in SES acts. So being that he paid them and they accepted, do you feel that's a crime? Just a question for you. Do you feel that is a crime or not? Somebody put it in the comments. You heard him say it straight off the top that he had tryouts and he paid them. So they paid to be tried out. Now they're coming into court trying to get cashed out. <laughs> All right. Following the tryouts with Jacobson, Smith would often then personally approve whether the men who were selected would meet Jeffries and Smith. Yo, you hear this? Now, what kind of freak thing is this they alleging that these men are? They saying that Smith would try out the anal. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then get back at his man and say, yo, get this dude, he's bananas. Is this, this is what we're going to be have to be looking at for maybe even the next decade, at least five years, because they're going to bring all kinds of indictments to get anybody they want and to grab any company they want because they all been doing this because in their mind they thought it was legal. Let's ride. Because if I was their attorney, Rob, if I was their attorney, I would challenge it on the simple fact that these men, you understand? They paid for service, even though it's illicit, but that don't warrant taking the company. Right now, they could take anyone's company from their freakish desires. Now, Smith tried it out, told Jeffries, it's the bomb, you got to get some, and then they call him in and they promise him they're going to give him an expiring modeling career so they'll get with Jeffries after Smith spent the little couple of dollars. So, Fent, uh, uh, excuse me, so um, Jeffries... He don't. He didn't want to spend his money for it. So he told his man, you know, you spend, I'll put a couple of dollars to it or whatever, and then you let me know if it's worth it. I don't want to get involved in it if it ain't worth it. And then Smith come back and say, yo, dog. Yo, dog. The defendants would fly the selected men to Jeffries and Smith's homes in the Hamptons in New York City. Where don't that sound like Diddy? The Hamptons in New York City arrested them in Miami Raid on the house like they did Diddy. Sent uh, extra favors in order to elevate your career and possibly be a model for Amacromium Fitch. Uh, efforts to get a rap career and be down with Bad Boy. Sounds a lot familiar. Or to hotels around the world in such places as England, France, Italy, Morocco, and St. Bart's. See, that's... What they accuse in Diddy of flying people all around to all these expensive places, doing all these expensive things. But I want y'all to know, and I'm saying this is a disclaimer so you know, this is all speculation. But this is the way speculation works. You have your speculation, and then you have the truth that come out later. But certain acts make it look a certain way. So right now, it's not looking good for Diddy. Right now, it's looking like Diddy may have put them on him, so Diddy get ready to go up for bail. Let's see if Diddy gets bail. Let's see if Amber Crow, because right now, Amber Cromie and, and Fitch, right, is a big enough fish to at least get coffee, Diddy, love, 
back in action. That's why they don't want to let him out. <laughs> Let's keep this thing moving, man. All right, because y'all don't understand how serious this is getting ready to get. For the purpose of attending events to engage in commercial sex. Mm. But beyond simply hiring men for sex, Jeffries, Smith, and Jacobson used force, fraud, and coercion to traffic those men for their own sexual gratification. Bottom line, he's saying he manipulated them. They saying that Amicop Infants, you know, and CEO Mike Jeffries allegedly manipulated these people and used deception to promise some things that they had no intentions of giving them in order to get uh, actual service from them. For example, as alleged, the defendants employed a referral system and an interview process hmm. that did not inform the men of the details of the sex events before they attended, including the full extent and nature of the sexual activity that would be required of the men at these events. Yeah, we talking about grown men over 18, right? They call you when and they promising you to give you a modeling career. They're selling you all these dreams. They, you know, you got Smith offering you money so that he could try you out, so he could let Jeffries know what time it is. Your only intention as a model when you go in to these offices is to land the job by any means necessary. That means cutting whoever's throat that's in your way to get there or, you know what I mean, using their throat. I'm just saying. I'm just keeping it 100. Try to break it down so y'all understand. They caused the men to believe that attending these sex events could yield modeling opportunities with Abercrombie or otherwise benefit their careers. And that's why they went, to benefit their careers. So they knew what they was walking into. Not defending, just keeping it 100 from a gangster point of view because this is a gangster channel. Now, let's move on. Smith and Jeffries employed a secret staff to operate these sex events. The staff, the staff ensured that the men signed non-disclosure agreements and handed over their personal items, such as their phones, before the start of the events to maintain the secrecy of these events. Hold up. They telling you, yo, sign this non-disclosure, hand over your phone, and we taking you into this X party. And you sign the NDA, you hand over your phone and you attend the party, you induce the drugs, and then you perform. And then here it is, you coming back and you saying, hold up, they didn't give me the job. They promised me a job. They said, if I let them <coughs> me, they'll give me a job. And they didn't give me the job. So they violated the breach of contract and they promised to give me a job if I performed with them. The defendants caused the men to believe that not complying with requests for certain acts, sex acts, during the events could harm their careers. In other words, they told them, if you don't perform with me, you ain't going to get nothing because this is what everybody's doing and we wanted the biggest ones. You're in our office, you're on our casting couch. Lay down and spread them, Jake. The defendants pressured the men to consume alcohol, Viagra, and muscle relaxants known as poppers during the sex events. Hold up, so they held them down and forced Viagra and poppers down their throat or did they willingly take it? This is what the lawyers are gonna have to, you know, pull out when it's time for the discovery and the actual trial. How do you give someone a Viagra pill without them taking it unless you hold them down and force it down their throat? Somebody talk to me. And they required the presence of staff during the sexual activity and ensured that the men did not leave the sex events until Jeffries and Smith decided that the sessions were over. Maybe, I'm just thinking devil's advocate. Maybe Jeffries and Smith told them, look, we're going to be here for a couple of hours. We're going to hang out. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. And you know what I mean? Then, you know, after they're there for a little bit, they did a little bit, they got tired, and they say, man, this might not be going nowhere. They changed their mind, and the people told them, yo, dog, you know you can't leave. You turn over your phone, you sign this uh, NDA. You know what time it is. Sit your ass back on that couch. All uh, right, <laughs> literally. Also, as alleged, on more than one occasion, 
Jeffries and Smith either directed others to inject or personally injected men with an erection-inducing substance for the purpose of causing the men to engage in sex acts the men were incapable of engaging in or unwilling to engage in. Did they hold him down and engage them, or did they willingly say, okay, go ahead, you can shoot me up, I'm ready. Additionally, the indictment alleges on more than one occasion when men did not or could not consent, Jeffries and Smith violated the bodily integrity of these men by subjecting them or continuing to subject them to invasive sexual and violent contact by body parts and other objects. How do you as a man sit there and allow another man to do this without your consent? Couldn't they fight? Or models don't fight or can't fight? I'm just asking. It's just a question, you know. I'm not picking sides. Y'all let me know. Put it in the comments. As alleged in the indictment, Jeffrey Smith and Jacobson didn't just carry this activity on for a couple of occasions. Their sex trafficking and prostitution enterprise lasted at least from the end of 2008 until early 2015. That's like eight years, and y'all didn't know this was going on to move in soon, or you waited till you got Diddy to make it look like Diddy turned them in. Do y'all think that Diddy turned these two in to get bail? Stay tuned to find out at the bail hearing. During that period, the defendants hired dozens of men and transported them to New York and around the globe. They you heard the key word, hired. If you hire someone, is that illegal? Okay, you hire them for an illegal act. So the legal act is illegal. So do they charge these men that willingly sold themselves? Because like, let's ride. We gonna ride. Now, I've seen on TV where they had these undercover stings, where they had these female officers looking good, like hookers on the side of the street, and they try and pick up men from off the side of the street. And when they get them, they get them in a the hotel room, and soon they pull out the money, they run, and they bust them for trying to, you know what I mean, sell themselves. So now, here you go, these men is selling themselves to go around the world to be transported. You know, that's the legal term to make it sound crazy, but... You know what I mean? To travel. That's all it is. They paid for their travel to go where they wanted to bring them to have whatever it is that they wanted to have. So by them paying for their travel, they willingly booked their ticket, willingly got on a private jet or whatever, and went to these luxurious areas for, you know, eight years. And then now they turn around and they say, man, I never got my modeling career. Or I got my modeling career, but it didn't go anywhere. You lied. You told me if I choked you out good enough that I would get that, I would get a modeling job and I'd be straight for the rest of my life. No, you couldn't keep the job because you suck as a model. But you did a good job sucking. <laughs> you know what I mean? This is where they at right now. This is how crazy this whole story is to me. Spent millions of dollars on a massive infrastructure to support this operation and maintain its secrecy. You see what he said? Millions of dollars on this infrastructure. Pay attention to that word. Millions of dollars on the infrastructure. That infrastructure is the Amber Crombie and Finch enterprise. So that means that they're saying that they use Amber Crombie and Finch, allegedly, in order to, you know, further these x x and that's why they're sitting there getting ready to put that in the indictment I... this included hundreds thousands of dollars of cash for commercial sex prolific amounts of money for staff to run the sex events money for domestic travel international travel hotel rooms services services from you've been all right, see, so you understand, right? All that that they're saying right now, right? Let's make this real clear. All they're saying is that they spent a lot of money to do all these things. They spent all this money to do all these things to have these crazy, you know, freak offs, as Diddy labeled it. Now, Diddy gets locked up, can't get bail, blue bail twice at the appellate court, and then now he got to give up a bigger fish, and then here it is, they pop up with a big fish right from his hometown of Miami. That's doing the same thing. That means they was watching them from before. And maybe if 
if, if, because this is not factual, if Diddy did turn them in, they just rushed the indictment, brought it in, and expect them to turn on other Europeans that's getting it, that's into that type of behavior. The same way they expect Diddy to turn in those type of people in order for them to go when they're done with these, you know, millionaires and billionaires that been running the country and keeping regular folks out. When they're done with this, they're going to clear the financial deficit for the United States of America. Thanks to this New York Savers Act. Company and Jacobson's salary, among other things. Now, this investigation remains ongoing. Although there are 15 John Doe's identified as victims in this indictment, this interstate prostitution venture encompassed dozens and dozens of men. And I encourage anyone with information about this case, including anyone who was a victim of the defendant's alleged crimes, to contact the FBI. 1-800 call FBI. Now I want to thank the victims who have already come forward for sharing their stories. Prosecutions like this are really impossible without the bravery of victims who are willing to report what happened to them to law enforcement. Ah, 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 ah. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Hold up, hold up. Let's get this right. Let's get this right. Let's get this right. Bob. Let's take this right. Now, he's saying he want to thank them for coming forward to bring it to law enforcement, right? Let's ride. So now, let, 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 let's do this and see if they'll still get these people to willingly come forward to, you know, help law enforcement and get it off their chest if they tell them two things. One, if you bring a criminal case, you can't bring a civil case. So we could either lock them up or we could give you the bag. What do you think they'll choose? To be locked up, to have that person, Abercrombie and Fitch, and the CEO, Mike Jeffries, and Diddy, locked up and get nothing. Or if they told them that, they'll say, forget the criminal charges, bring me the bag. Put it in the comments what you think. Don't you see what this is? That's why I'm taking my time to walk you through this so you could understand. You tell me what you think. Would they still be running to the FBI if once went to the FBI, you could no longer bring charges, oh, excuse me, suits in a civil court. So that means you won't get no money, but we'll lock them up. What do you think they really want, the money or to lock them up? Y'all put it in the comments. But this office, the Department of Justice, and its law enforcement partners will continue to work tirelessly to protect victims from powerful individuals who use their wealth and their influence to exploit and harm others for sexual gratification. In addition to my team, I'd like to give special thanks to FBI Special Agent Amanda Young and NYPD Detectives Paul Byrne and Antonio Pagan, who have worked hard on this investigation in the pursuit of justice. Ah, uh, you see that? That's where everybody get their props, everybody get their promotions, and everybody move up in the law enforcement department and justice political ladder that's why he said the name. So they're letting them know, like, hold on now. We're from New York State. We might be smaller than you, but we put our work in. I'll now turn it over to FBI Assistant Director in Charge, Denki. All right, let's see what Denki talking about. Come on, Denki. Let's go. Thank you, Brian. Good afternoon. I'm Jim Dennehy, Assistant Director in Charge of the FBI's New York Field Office. Today's indictment highlights the abhorrent behavior of Michael Jeffries, Matthew Smith, and James Jacobson. Mm. What's alleged in the indictment is not only beyond disturbing, dishonorable, and disgraceful, but simply put, it's criminal. In short, these individuals are charged with running a prostitution and international sex trafficking business using a combination of force, fraud, and coercion. Mm. to induce victims into participating in their illegal operations. Mm. The alleged behavior occurred here in New York City 
and in multiple countries worldwide. The defendants allegedly preyed on the hopes and dreams of their victims by exploiting, abusing, and silencing them to fulfill their own desires with insidious secret intentions. Despite the alleged efforts of Jeffries, Smith, and Jacobson to conceal their crimes, efforts that included threatening victims and requiring them to sign non-disclosure agreements, among other things, their plan failed. This case is yet another example of individuals using their wealth, power, or reputation to manipulate and control others for their own personal interests. I'd like to speak for a second to the victims in this case and others, both those who have come forward and those we believe are still out there. The FBI and our partners make it our mission to prioritize those who have been victimized by sexual predators. We know victims come from all walks of life. There are neighbors, our friends, and members of our community. We won't allow these criminal acts to go unchecked. We know our agency, however, cannot combat this tr threat alone. And we remain committed to investigating and bringing these cases forward to prosecution with our partners. We have dedicated teams ready to listen to you and to advocate for you, and we have victim specialists available to provide the necessary resources you need. If you or someone you know is a victim in this case or any other, the number to call is 1-800-CALL-FBI or online at tips.fbi.gov. We are committed to ensuring you not only get the assistance you need to cope, but also that you're aware of your rights. I'd like to thank the U.S. Attorney for the Eastern District of New York, Breon Peace, and the members of EDNY's Civil Rights Section and Long Island Division's Criminal Section. I'd also like to thank the NYPD's Detective Bureau and its Specialty Enforcement Division and Special Victims Division, as well as the FBI's Miami and Milwaukee field offices. See, this is what you call a photo op. This is a beautiful photo op. These are all the people involved in taking down this uh, Amacromian Fritz CEO, Mike Jeffries, alleged ex-trafficking prostitution ring. Everyone here is going to get a bonus and an award and a badge of honor when this is all over. Do you think Diddy's the one that put this in motion? Diddy, they grabbed Diddy, 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 Billy, can't get Billy. I'm trying to judge, so they gave him a third judge. So he's going in another time, so now with a third judge, they give him a chance to sit there, turn around, and think about it while he's in that cell locked in after being in mansions, $68 million yachts, globe trotting around the world, sailing around the Mediterranean. Now he's locked and confined in a cell, and they got him sitting there, and they say, yo, we need somebody else bigger than you, Diddy. We don't need Usher. We don't need, uh, what's the other kid name? Uh, Justin Bieber, we don't need Jimmy Fox, we don't need Steve Harvey, we don't need all those names. Those are peons. We're going to get them later. But right now, we need the big boys for you to get us out. We'll use them to get other people of their statural and financial barriers. But right now, we're in a financial deficit. It's an election. So we have to push the attention away from the election to bring it on to something else. And what better to a major scandal with the biggest entertainers of Hollywood? Hmm. I even saw a joint today, let's ride. I even saw a joint today where Diddy was saying that he wanted uh, Prince Harry and Prince William, you know what I mean? The princes over there in England, to come to one of his parties. He kept pursuing it. They didn't want to go to the party. Then one of them was getting ready to get married to the Megan um, young lady. No, nah, not Megan. Uh, I think maybe that's it. One of them was getting, the oldest one was getting ready to get married, right? As soon as I seen the wife, I knew the name because I've been watching the current affairs from in the prison, right? Being that they was engaged, Diddy took them off the list to come to his party. Now imagine if they would have went to the party. Do you think that they would allow them to go over to England, to the parliament, and arrest the princess? And raid, 
the castles in England? Do you think they would have allowed that? Like how they ransacked through Diddy's home and, you know, Amber Cromie and Fitz CEO Mike Jeffries and them property like that? Come on, talk to me, y'all. And also, I'd like to thank the dedicated investigators and personnel from the FBI, NYPD, Child Exploitation, Human Trafficking Task Force. Everybody get credit. Once again, we are waiting to hear from you, and we're here to help you. The number to call is 1-800-CALL-FBI. Thank you. And now I'd like to turn it over to Deputy Chief Ortiz. Come on, mister. Look at this. They got a black guy getting his props. You got, you got a white guy getting his props. And now Hello. you got a Hispanic. My name is uh, Deputy Chief Carlos Ortiz. How you I doing, Deputy? I am commanding officer of the NYPD Special Victims Unit. Uh, good morning, everyone. And thank you for joining us this afternoon. The NYPD is committed to fighting for all victims of sexual violence. We stand here today with our federal partners as we continue that mission. Uh, our coordinated... Our continued co collaboration allows us the necessary resources to ensure successful prosecutions. First of all, I want to thank Attorney Pierce, FBI Assistant Director in charge, Dennehy, and their staff, along with my human trafficking unit led by uh, Captain Chase and Lieutenant Piccarello for their diligent work in regards to this case. As evident by today's uh, announcement, we, ho we hope our work is able to bring some sense of dignity back to these survivors. The NYPD encourages all survivors of sexual-based uh, sexual violence, including trafficking, to come forward and speak with us, regardless of gender, immigration status, race, or sexual orientation. Our investigators are equipped to handle all reports. Our joint federal teams remain committed to end all human trafficking. The mission and obligation of the NYPD Special Victims Unit is to provide a voice for those that feel unheard. We are here for you. Together with our federal partners, we will continue to fight for the victims of the city and all over the country. Thank you. Mm. Right to the point. Gunshots. We'll take a few questions. Mm. Let's see what the questions look like. Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. See, good question. He's actually, but if this happened and ended in 2015, why are you just bringing it now? He just didn't add in, is it because you got Diddy and Diddy's giving you more information to put together the dots to the piece of what you've been investigating since 2015 when the case went dry or cold, as they call it? Somebody put it in the comments. And then he also asked them about the lawsuit, which is what I mentioned earlier. They, If they go to the, if they convict them criminally, they shouldn't be able to convict them you know, civilly. So you shouldn't be able to lock them up and get the money. I say lock them up and throw away the key. But the money is more important, so they have to leave the money on the table to get the witnesses to come in. All right. Yeah, so, um, you know, these prosecutions really de depend, as I said earlier, on the bravery of the victims to come forward and tell their stories. That happened in this case. Once that happened, our team and our law enforcement partners investigated this case thoroughly and quickly and we're now arriving at this day when we're charging the conduct so i say to all victims um we're here we will listen we will investigate and bring charges where appropriate the intersection of the civil lawsuits there really is we our investigation is based on our investigation the facts the evidence we find and the law and so the, the civil lawsuits don't dictate what we do or vice versa. And the, the, do you believe the conduct ended in 2015 or that's just what's chargeable? Now? I will say, I think the best way to answer that is to say this investigation remains ongoing. We encourage any victims or any witnesses to come forward with additional information. And if there's a need to, to bring further charges, we of course will not hesitate to do that. Uh, I had a question about the events themselves. When they took place, were they like company sanctioned events or did they at any point happen on company grounds? And about the John Doe's, 
were they employed at all by the company? Were, were they working in stores? Did any of them actually make it to be part of these like advertisements? Or were they just simply brought in for these purposes and then recycled out? I can't go beyond the allegations in the indictment. Um, we don't have evidence that this happened on company grounds, but I will not go further into who is aware where things happen beyond what is already in the indictment, including with respect to what happened after the events. Hi there, I think I'm doing this. Uh, can you tell us how many victims there were in total of the indictment system? Uh, there were 15 genders, and how many did you interview? I can't get into um, our interview process. We interviewed many, many witnesses. Um, as I said, the team and our law enforcement partners did a very thorough investigation into this activity. We have named 15 John Doe's, but as I indicated before, there may be other victims out there. We're hoping to hear from folks after this, and we will take action as appropriate. How did your office first learn about these events and what was happening? I think we became aware through uh, media reports, uh, which is not uncommon um, when you have um, media that reports on um, stories that relate to crimes, alleged crimes. Um, we follow up and hey, what he's talking about right now is right. They follow up on social media reporting. So a lot of these cases is built. See, that's how they made it easy, right? Let's ride. That's how they made it easy, really easy, you know, for law enforcement now. They used to have to uh, rely on people that was involved in the crime. Now they just get people that report on the crime because they know people that was involved in the crime. And from what the people was involved in the crime told them about the people that was involved in the crime that they may not like or for whatever reason. And then now they report on it. They use them as a third party whistleblower. Do you understand what I just said? Y'all rewind. I'm not even going to say that twice because that might be a little bit too deep, might be giving you a little too much. When somebody reports on a crime, they're looking at the media. They just don't want to say social media, but, you know, right now the media is social media. It's not just the media anymore. It's not just the newspaper and the local news. Now you have internet, you got uh, TikTok, you got Instagram, you got uh, X, you got all these media outlets, but they're called social media outlets. So the same way, you know, us podcasters, we scour the internet to look for content to report on, they scour the internet to look for crimes to convict and bring charges on. You see how powerful this social media is? So be careful with the self-snitching on social media and on records because you see what's happening with Young Thug down there. Hmm. Let's keep this moving. Uh, all right. And, and do our diligence. Sir, sir, sir. Uh, uh, thank you for doing this, Darrell. I'm so glad you see two questions. I think I want to clarify a little bit on Mark Morales' point. Or is the and does the indictment allege that the resources of Abercrombie and Fitch uh, were involved in the furtherance of this sex trafficking, mm. where the company itself would have? See, she's asking them. Let me know if what you're saying that the finances at Abercrombie and Crunch is responsible for the furtherance of these criminal activities. Because if that's what you're saying, then we already know you're going at the bag. Good question. Let's see how he speaks on this one. Have any liability? And then secondly, uh, generalists, you know, just from a sex, uh, from a sex victims and sexual violence and the uh, investigatory standpoint, we have this situation, this, this these scenarios that are now victims are coming more forward publicly about power, control, uh, manipulation of those who um, have aspirations. You have the Sean Combs case, you have this case. Are, are we finding that there are going to be more widespread investigations with regard to officials in power exploiting and manipulating people? 
Yeah, so in the first question, we don't allege in the indictment that the resources of Abercrombie and Fitch were used in furtherance of mm -hmm. this oh, they say, but criminal they activity. But we, what we do allege and acknowledge is that the fact that um, Michael Jeffries was CEO of Abercrombie and Fitch was utilized and the potential of an opportunity at Abercrombie to be in an ad or things like that were one of some of the carrots that I think people perceived as what they would achieve by participating in this activity. On your second question, I don't know if I could say it's a trend one way or the other. Um, I'm hopeful that to the extent there are victims out there who have been subjected to trafficking activity, abuse, exploitation, that they would be confident enough in their federal and state law enforcement partners to come forward. As I said before, we listen, we investigate, we take action, and we will not hesitate to bring charges in this office in particular. And my civil rights team, I think you know, we have a track record of bringing cases with respect to people in power who have taken advantage of and abused others. All right, see, let me break that down so that we understand what's going on here. So she just asked them about the bag. Are you saying that they used the finances for Amacrobi and uh, Finch, right, with the CEO, Mike Jeffries, you know, to further this activity? Because if he said yes, that means that they was going to go after forfeiting the bag from them. Now I'm going to go get that indictment because my question is, and your question should be, why are they going after Diddy's finances for the same type of crime that happened with their, you know, with their workers in uh, Amacrombie and Finch, allegedly, and the CEO, uh, Mike Jeffries, allegedly, but they're not going after their finances, but they're going after Diddy's finances by saying Diddy's finance was intertwined and furthered the movement of his ex-parties. But they're saying that Amacrombie and Finch and the CEO, Mike Jeffries, alleged involvement didn't involve the bag, so that means that they're just going to get smack on the wrist. They're just going to get a little prison time. But Diddy's going to get a whole lot of prison time and he's going to lose everything. That's how they put a man like Diddy back in his place because he forgot where he came from. If he would have stayed connected to the hood, the hood would have stood up and screamed for him. But he didn't. He shined on him. He flossed on him. He did it on him, <laughs> you know? And then now, here we go. We Where we at now, then he's locked in a cell 23 hours a day and maybe bringing in other people such as this CEO and the company. Y'all understand where we going with this? Pay attention. Don't let it go over your head. It can cost you. We prosecuted R. Kelly. Mm. We brought the Nixium case. We don't hesitate to hold the powerful and the wealthy to account if they have violated federal criminal laws. And just to clarify, um, when I say a trend, a trend from the power, you may have just clarified that, but with regard to, you know, how widespread and pervasive it seems to be coming, becoming uh, externally facing with regard to those in power, power control, manipulating and exploiting people. Are we finding, are you finding that your investigations are, are are leveling off, or are they consistent, or are we finding that you are investigating more cases of this in this in this uh, space? As I said before, I think we stand ready to investigate any criminal conduct, whether it relates to rich and powerful or not so rich and powerful. If sex trafficking laws, inter interstate prosecution laws, etc., are violated, we stand ready to investigate and bring charges as appropriate. Um, what more can you say about uh, the victims allegedly being recruited as heterosexual men to engage in non-heterosexual acts? And also, can you elaborate more on why this is uh, in the Eastern District? Uh, well, I think I'll take the second part first. I mean, venue is driven by the activity, as I mentioned earlier, and as alleged in the indictment, much of this ap activity happened in New York in the Hamptons in particular, which is a part of the Eastern District of New York. We have JFK uh, International Airport and travel comes to and through JFK 
et cetera. So that's sort of the reason in part that we are um, bringing this case, among other reasons. There are victims here, et cetera. Um, there's really nothing more beyond the indictment that I can um, discuss regarding why the choice was for heterosexual men, et cetera. I think I'm limited to what's, what's there. Yeah, he asked them, did they turn out heterosexual men? Why did they turn out heterosexual men? This is what the question was. Let's move forward. Just think about this. It's really funny. Mr. President, yeah. two points of clarification. One, when you said media reports, did you mean media reports in 2013? I'm sorry, 2003 last year. Is that? Yes, yes. And then these 15 people who bravely came forward, had, had any of them had previously complained to law enforcement, for example, on local law enforcement? I, I can't comment on that. Any other questions? Jonathan? Sir, uh, on another topic, there's great public interest in this city regarding corruption allegations. We're only going to take questions on this, on this topic. The, We're not answering any questions on other topics. We said that when the press conference started. Next question. Um, Shut him down. Yes, yeah, so um, they will have their initial appearances in courts, Florida and I think Minnesota, um, and then they will be brought to New York or travel to New York to be arraigned. We're expecting that that will happen either at the end of this week or early next week. In terms of detention, we put in a detention memo um, outlining our position for um, Matthew Smith. We are seeking detention. Um, in part, in part, he because he is a dual citizen of the United States and the UK, the risk of flight are particularly acute with him. And for the other two, we're seeking substantial bail packages. If those aren't met, of course, we expect that they would be detained as well. Obviously, those decisions are up to uh, the judges who um, do the arraignment. Stop it, stop it, stop it. And I got to give a gunshot. Did you just hear this man say that he's going to give two of them bail, but the other one that has dual citizenship with here, United States, and over in the UK, he won't get bail because he has the dual citizenship. Then why did he can't get bail? He's a citizen. Why he can't get a substantial bail packet? But they're giving these two an opportunity at bail. Are y'all paying attention to this? Come on, man. It's almost over. Sorry, if I can try our topic. Uh, the, um... In regards to evidence, you said phones were taken from many of the victims' private. Do you have any video on top of uh, or other uh, evidence besides the story of the witnesses that would help you uh, substantiate the evidence? We have substantial evidence. Um, we have uh, travel records, we have financial records, we have testimony of victims and other witnesses. So we think we have a lot of evidence that corroborates the the charges in this case. Last question. All right, that's it. Now, right, I just asked you a very important question. Why didn't this man on the screen get an opportunity of bail when he put his own bail pack together and said he'll pay for the whole supervision and you could have your police force, FBI force, and everybody else monitor me? If you release me on this 50 million, but they just sat here and said they're going to give these two Europeans bail. The other one is not getting bail because he's dual citizenship. Is Diddy a dual citizen? No. Okay, they say Diddy can't get bail because why? He made a number of phone calls, you know, to witnesses and da 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 da. Now, how hard is it to tell the man, stop it? We're going to give you bail if you do it. We're going to revoke your bail immediately and we're going to wiretap your phone or whatever. But why is these two getting bail? And this man Diddy is not. That's the question to ask yourself. Share this video. Subscribe. Make sure you join the membership. These videos will go up there first and then over to the platform. So if you want to see these videos first, join the membership. And I will be giving out a lot of merchandise, you know, to show my appreciation. And of course, you know, I'm going to figure out a way to give out 10 of these books. Y'all put in the comments or y'all call me, whatever, and let me know what's the best way to give out 10 of these books. And, you know, let's say 10 T-shirts, you know, to shut the F up. But I love a dog. You know what I mean? 
uh, T-shirts to the members. So I want you, the members, to tell me how you want me to distribute this. Not drugs, just addictive reads. <laughs> All right, and merchandise. Let's go. Cash App is on the screen. Make sure you hit the logo and say it was created in 2020. Instagram is on the screen. Unique Mecca Audio. Let's keep it moving. Hit the like button. Hit the share button. Hit the notification button. And let's ride out. All right. Cheers. Cheers. Toast the crime. Toast the crime. Toast the crime. Toast the crime. Out the can of 26, yeah. he back on the strip, uh -huh. getting back in the mix. Yeah. What he mentions a gift. Right. You stand up ten toes down, and I suggest you pay attention to this. Real. Take a little gully posse and put it in home. Uh. He cut from the bottom, back. came up from the bottom. Back. Drop the book, you should go and get it. The Instagram page and the YouTube, you could go and visit. Yeah. Then you could consider yourself linked in. Sit front row and get jewels from a kingpin. Uh. How he went through it, so you ain't gotta go do it. Uh -huh. Did not pay attention would be stupid. Talking about a man that probably put your grandfather on probably the reason that him and your grand got along a man that generated millions on the block did his time never squill it to the cops make an audio In the 90s, yeah. drop top beam was so shine. Yeah. Yeah. I let shorty go, she was wine. Yeah. Treat her like my past, she behind me. Yeah. Spin a couple bands on the dapper yeah. dead. You be back again, getting green like a Packers fan. Yeah. No cap, it's a roaring uptown. Yeah. They be horn uptown, Dominican bust down. Word. Now we on the positive, Word. you we got a lot to give. Yes. Now you trying yes. to stop the kids from being an operative. Uh. So take heed, homie, lend an ear. Uh. He started in uptown, he gon' finish dead. Uptown, but uptown. now it ain't about about selling drugs, buying cars, it's no. about buying property to make the community ours, so we can get back to the 